This video provides an overview for operation of the National Flood Fight Materiel Center's 6 and 8 inch Godwin diesel pumps. To ensure proper operation and maintenance of these federally supplied resources, please review this video in its entirety and contact the National Flood Fight Materiel Center if you have questions. Each 6 and 8 inch pump is housed on a small trailer. However, this trailer is not designed for over the road transport and cannot be used at highway speeds. A secondary trailer with capacity for 3,250 pounds for the 6 inch and 5,250 pounds for the 8 inch must be used to transport the pumps long distances. The small trailer, which has a 3 inch adjustable pintle eye hitch, can be used to maneuver the pumps into position once on site. Items included with each pump kit include three 10-foot sections of suction hose, two 50-foot sections of discharge hose, and one intake filter. Note that all provided hoses include a Bauer-type pipe fitting, which allows up to 20 degrees of flexibility at the joints. Diesel fuel is required for operation of the pumps. Fuel capacity for the 6-inch is 60 gallons with an approximate consumption rate of 2.6 to 5.2 gallons per hour depending on RPM speed. Fuel capacity for the 8-inch is 100 gallons with an approximate consumption rate of 3.3 to 6.4 gallons per hour depending on RPM speed. Note that if the pumps run dry, the fuel delivery system will need to be bled before operation can resume. The 6-inch pump has an ideal pumping capacity of 750 gallons per minute at 2,000 RPM. Maximum capacity is 2,400 gallons per minute, but is not recommended for long periods of service. The 8-inch pump has an ideal pumping capacity of 1,600 gallons per minute at 2,000 RPM. Maximum capacity is approximately 3,000 gallons per minute, but is also not recommended for extended periods of service. Both pumps are self-priming and have a maximum suction lift head of less than 25 and a maximum speed of 2200 RPM. When setting up the pump, select a relatively level area on firm ground within 30 feet of the water to be pumped and within 100 feet of the discharge area. Keep in mind during the setup that the end of the intake hose and filter will need to be fully submerged during the pumping process. As the water level drops, the pump may need to be repositioned to ensure the hose can remain below the water level. Hoses should be laid out prior to final leveling of the pump to ensure sufficient length is available. To maximize fuel capacity, the pump should be as level as possible. Use the adjustable stabilizer jacks on the trailer to help level if needed. Remember to chalk the wheels to prevent movement. Once the pump is in position and leveling is complete, the intake hose can be connected. Start by attaching the filter to the end of one of the intake hoses. Use the metal clamps to secure the filter to the rim of the hose. The clamps are very tight and a small diameter metal pipe, often referred to as a cheater bar, may be needed to fully snap them into place. Once the filter is attached, connect additional intake hose sections to one another using the metal clamping mechanisms to achieve the desired length. When the intake hose is fully assembled, connect it to the supply inlet on the pump using the same clamping methods. Ensure all clamps are fully secured and the hoses are adequately supported on sandbags or a similar structure every five feet if not lying on the ground. Connecting the discharge hose is the same as the intake hose process, however connection to the pump will be at the discharge outlet instead of the supply inlet. Erosion protection from the discharge hose is critical. If possible, direct discharge onto riprap, concrete, a sheet of plywood, or poly sheeting to prevent levee damage on earthen levees. Discharging into still or moving water that is close to a levee without ground protection can also cause damage and possible levee failure. If the distance to the discharge area is greater than 100 feet and the discharge hose will not reach, consider the following solutions shown here.
It is important to remember that these pumps are self-priming and will attempt to draw water even if no water is available. The pump will automatically reprime when water becomes available at the intake. If the pump does not self-prime, ensure all drain valves are closed. All hose clamps are tight. The filter screen is cleaned and the hose with filter is fully submerged in the water. Before starting the pump, it is important to familiarize yourself with the features such as the control panel, fueling system, and drain valves. Use the following steps to start the pump. If equipped with a battery shutoff switch, turn the switch to on. On the control panel, turn the key to the on position, then press and hold the safety shutdown bypass button. Turn the key to start and let the switch return to the run position while continuing to hold the bypass button for another 5 to 10 seconds to increase oil pressure. Release the bypass button and allow engine to warm up at 1200 RPM for 1 to 2 minutes before increasing to desired speed. Additional warm up time will be needed if operating in cold weather. Some pumps have a digital control panel and do not have a bypass button. When starting these pumps, turn the key to the man setting, then press and hold the green start button to start the engine. Increasing the speed of the engine is done by either turning a throttle dial on the pumps with non-digital controls or using the increase RPM button on the digitally controlled units. Remember the ideal operating speed is 2000 RPM and the maximum is 2200. Note that when the pump is started, air will exit the discharge hose during priming and initial operation. Once started, the pump may be left unattended except for daily maintenance requirements. Use the following steps to stop the pump. Use the throttle dial or the decrease RPM button to reduce engine speed below 1200 RPMs. Allow the pump to run for at least two minutes at this lower speed to cool down. Turn the key to the off position. Open drains on the pump chamber valves to remove excess water from the pump. The following maintenance tasks should be completed daily during pump use. Clean the filter screen at the end of the intake hose as needed. Verify engine oil is within the hatched pattern on the dipstick. Add lubrication to grease fittings. Inspect fuel filters for presence of water or debris. If water is present, loosen the drain plugs at the bottom of the fuel filter one half to one turn, then loosen the air bleed plugs two full turns. Drain water until fuel starts to drain out, then retighten both plugs. Verify dust unloader valve is clear by squeezing the value on the air cleaner assembly. When engine is cool, verify radiator coolant level. Do not open the radiator when the engine is warm or running. The following maintenance task should be completed weekly during pump use. Check the oil level in the mechanical seal. Check proper actuation of pressure relief valve of compressor. Value should easily spring back into position when released. Verify inflation pressure is correct on tires. Diesel fuel used in the pumps should meet the following requirements shown here.